Hello everyone, my name is Crystal Thomas and I have prepared a fun primary singing activity today. We are going to go on a pioneer trek and I have my map. We are going to see if we can make it all the way to the Salt Lake Valley. Do you think you can help me with that? Okay, so I want to give you a couple fun facts before we start. It took a handcart company only 85 days to go from winter quarters to the Salt Lake Valley, while it took a covered wagon company 111 days to complete the same journey. Those ox carts were slow, okay? And a total of 3,193 pioneers came across the plains pushing hand carts. Each cart was limited to 100 pounds. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so this is our little wagon that we are gonna move along our stops as we travel. And each stop, we're gonna talk for a second and we're gonna sing a song, okay? So, should we start? All right. Let's move our little person. Here he goes. So our first stop is Nauvoo. Okay. So in Nauvoo, the saints built a temple and they made lots of sacrifices to build that temple. And then they had to leave it behind and it got destroyed. Um, which was really hard. So our first song is we are going to sing I Love to See the Temple. I love to see the temple I'm going there someday To feel the Holy Spirit To listen and to pray Okay, are we ready to go to our next stop? Here we go. We ready? Are we there yet? We are there. Okay, we made it to winter quarters. Okay, so the pioneers this trek was hard. It was really hard, but they had something called courage. Um, they had courage to keep going, even though things were hard. So the next song we're gonna sing is Nephi's Courage. And even though you're not with me, I want you to go ahead and sing, okay? Here we go. <laughs> The Lord commanded Nephi to go and get the plates from the wicked Laban inside the city gates. Laban and Lemuel were both afraid to try. Nephi was courageous. 
This was his reply. I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way he wants me to obey. I will go, I will do Nephi's older brothers believed it would not float. Laughing and mocking, they said he should not try. Nephi was courageous, this was his reply. I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way he wants me to obey. I will go. I will do the things the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way. He wants me to obey. The Lord gives us commandments and asks us to obey. Sometimes I am tempted to choose another way. When I'm discouraged and think I cannot try, I will I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way. He wants me to obey. I will go, I will do the things the Lord commands. I know the Lord provides a way. He wants me to obey. Great job. Okay, we are on our way. Okay, ready? Let's see if we can make it to our next stop. We made it! All right, so now we're at Chimney Rock. Okay. So the pioneers could see Chimney Rock from a long way off and they would have to walk several days before they actually reached it. And someone said, we are all pioneers. None of us has been in this day before. Earlier pioneers had no cars, trains, airplanes, telephones, electricity, radios, or TV but they sang as they walked and walked, and we can sing as we walk through today, or we can grouch every step of the way and be miserable. So what do you think we should be doing? We should be happy and sing, right? So now we are gonna sing Pioneer Children Were Quick to Obey. Pioneer children were quick to obey Walking along by the wagons all day Then in the firelight kneeling to pray Little pioneer children Good job! Okay, 
Let's see where we're going next. Here we go. Water crossing. Okay, so I want to tell you a story about something that happened at Sweetwater Crossing. Okay, it's the story of three young men. Um, so when they reached the Sweetwater River, the pioneers, on November 3rd, there were chunks of ice that were floating in the freezing water. And after all these people had been through and in their weakened condition, that river seemed impossible to cross. It looked like stepping into death itself to move into that freezing stream. Men who had once been strong sat on the frozen ground and just cried. And so did the women and the children, and many just didn't think that they could do it. But there were three 18-year-old boys belonging to a relief party they came to the rescue and to the astonishment of all who saw, carried nearly every member of that ill-fated handcart company across the snowbound stream. The strain was so terrible and the exposure was so great that in later years, all of those boys died from the effects of it. When President Brigham Young heard of this heroic act, he cried and later declared publicly that act alone will ensure that C. Allen Huntington, George W. Grant, and David P. Kimball, an everlasting salvation in the celestial kingdom of God, worlds without end. So these boys, how old were they? They were only 18. And because um, back then they were probably holders of the Aaronic priesthood, and they were heroes and they sacrificed their health and eventually their lives to save the lives of those that they helped. So they carried the handcart company across the river in the freezing cold. That is an incredible story, huh? So we are gonna sing Dare to Do Right. good progress. Okay, we are on our next stop. Let's see if we can make it. Are we ready? We made it! Okay, isn't that cool how the hand cart moves all by itself? We are in Martin's Cove. I have another story for you, and it's about a little 10-year-old girl, and her name is Bottle Mortensen, okay? So we find one of the most touching stories of sacrifice, faith, and loving charity in the life of Jens Nielsen, who was a member of the Willie Handcart Company. Jens, a relatively prosperous Danish farmer, heeded the call to bring his family to Zion 
in Iowa, he wrote that he had let all of his money go to the church except enough to buy a handcart and stock it with 15 pounds of belongings per person. Jens wrote, Obedience is better than sacrifice. The people for whom Jens was responsible were himself, his wife, Elsie, their six-year-old son, Niels, and a nine-year-old girl, Bottle Mortensen, whom Jens offered to take to Utah. In the early Wyoming blizzard, temperatures plummeted below zero. The Nielsens had consumed their last pound of flour days before, but somehow they made it over the treacherous Rocky Ridge, which is our next stop, urged on by their indomitable courage and unconquerable faith. And even though they were faithful and they kept going and they had courage, um, 13 of the company died at Rock Creek and were buried in shallow snow-covered graves. Among them, Jens and Elsie's son, Niels, and young Bottle Mortensen. It's a really tragic story, but President Hinckley describes this portion of the trail as a trail of tragedy, a trail of faith, a trail of devotion, a trail of consecration, even the consecration of life itself. So ultimately, that little girl is in heaven and she's in the celestial kingdom and she is so blessed for her good choices and for being so brave. Makes me tear up a little bit. Okay, so we are going to sing to be a pioneer. job you guys we are almost there all right do you remember what our next stop was from our story Let's see. okay we are to rocky ridge and now we're gonna sing the ox cart prophet said this is the right place we made it all the way to the end that's fantastic you guys so the very last song we're gonna sing is follow the prophet and we're gonna do the last verse because that one I feel like is important for us today now we have a world where people are confused if you don't believe it, go and watch the news. We can get direction all along our way. If we heed the prophets, follow what they say. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet, follow the prophet, don't go astray. Follow the prophet, follow I hope that you had as much fun as I did on our pioneer trek today. 
and I hope you learned some new songs and you sing along with me and you keep following the prophet and that you keep making good choices and dare to do right.